to our next session. Uh, the next session, which will be uh, about uh, propulsion systems, electric propulsion systems. We will have Jinyin Sang from uh, Rolls-Royce presenting on the, a total different kind, no eVTOL, mainly it will be on the commuter side, which will probably be the first use case of electric aircraft we will have. So, um, and I ask all the remaining people of the first session, Konstantin Kondak and uh, Mar uh, Martin Drosky, or no, I think it's in this first for NGM Compro, we have um, Jakub, uh, who's going to present. So thank you for the first, to the first session and see you soon. And I hope in real. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. See you soon. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Bye. So Jin Ying, uh, I see you're on. And um, I think we should, uh, if you can share the screen, we can see if it works. We checked out yesterday. It should work. Then I think... Uh, we definitely can go and uh, hear your presentation because um, I know you uh, you have had three big names in your career already. You have done uh, your uh, PhD in aeronautic engineering. You worked for Airbus. Then you changed because you like electric to Siemens electric aircraft. And then you changed with Siemens electric aircraft to Rolls-Royce. So you've seen three big ones already. Let's hear what Rolls-Royce is planning for the next future. Okay, thanks a lot, Willy, for the introduction. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you fine. Okay, can you see my screen as well? Yes, uh, is this a screen behind you or uh, otherwise? No, uh, I don't see the screen yet. Is there is okay. no screen sharing uh, coming up. Wait a minute, just trying to share. Okay, now it should. Now it comes up. Yes. Okay, great. That's Thanks a lot. Okay, really... I switch my camera yeah. and mic off. Okay. So thanks a lot, really, for the introduction. I'm very happy to be here again because I've been here since uh, in this e flight forum since 2017. So happy to uh, give another presentation this year. So today I uh, want to present or give an overview about our innovative propulsion system solutions for advanced air mobility. Um, in a while I will explain what vehicles they are. Um, let me just start with our introduction of, of Rolls-Royce Electrical. So as everybody knows, uh, Rolls-Royce um, has three business pillars currently. So the first one is the civil aerospace uh, delivering big gas turbine or tuber fan engines into the commercial airliners. I'm sure actually every one of us has already flew, flown once with a Rolls-Royce engine powered commercial airliner. And the second business unit is the defense. For example, Rolls-Royce is delivering the lift system for the F-35 fighter. And the third business pillar so far was the power systems, delivering power um, solutions into train and also naval sectors. So since beginning of this year, Rolls-Royce Electrical has been established as a fourth pillar of Rolls-Royce Group. And now we are an independent business unit alongside the other three. And Rolls-Royce Electrical has uh, seven sites across six countries. So the countries are Norway, Germany, of course, also UK, and then Hungary. And then we have also our site in Singapore and in Indianapolis in the USA. So altogether, we have 500 employees currently, and the business is still uh, growing. Um, altogether, we have converted a lot of energy into learnings, and um, we consumed around 200,000 kilowatt hours. Um, in our um, ground and especially flight demonstrators. So in the following slide, you see here the three uh, most current projects. For example, the Rolls-Royce Exo, who broke, uh, who established a new world speed record in electric aircraft, uh, officially um, certified beginning of this year. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the record. Airbus, 
we are supporting the flight campaign back to, into the year 2018, 2019. And uh, also the flight test has been continued partially during this year. And the third example of flight demonstrator is the H3PS project within which we developed a parallel hybrid electric propulsion system together with the airframer Technum. And uh, this aircraft saw its first flight in February of this year. Okay. So um, currently uh, from the product development perspective, Rolls-Royce Electrical is concentrating on two programs. The first one is an urban air mobility UIM program delivering electrical propulsion system for vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Um, the operation of this kind of vehicle is targeting at intra-city operations below 100 kilometer flying distances. The second program is a commuter program aiming at the regional air mobility market, uh, delivering uh, flying vehicles for intercity and island hopping missions. Usually the mission will be below 500 kilometer or around 200 nautical miles um, using conventional Propulsion system. So actually, the airport can be located uh, in the vicinity of urban um, urban areas, urban very areas. That means um, for the customer, this will provide a significant reduction of time. That means um, usually it takes one hour to reach the next bigger airport um, to be able to fly to another destination. If I can already start right away from my home, this will provide a big benefit for me as well. And the second one is, of course, low emission, also due to the very low carbon emission. And we can believe this um, kind of aircraft can also start uh, take off and uh, near the city. And the third benefit is the electric propulsion. large size business jets. Um, if we segment that, we immediately also identify the um, potential enabling technology, which we can utilize for different market segment. So if we look at the urban air mobility and commuter segment, we believe in this segment, you can use uh, all electric or battery electric um, as a battery as an energy source because they are more mature and um, you can if you don't fly on very long distance this the energy will be enough to deliver the uh, emphasis range um, for commuter range you can if you want to go further in the uh, range you may need a range extender by for example using turbo generator system which has a higher maturity and also clear, uh, clearer path to certification. Um, and also now, um, as I will show in the later slide, we're also investigating the fuel cell as a potential energy source to enable longer flights. And for the bigger aircraft, 
we read, um, believe you can either use sustainable aviation fuel or use more electric engine to increase the efficiency of the uh, current engine. And fuel cell can probably has a potential application as a APU and um, hydrogen burning combustion uh, engine can also be an alternative. So this is our um, technolo technological view on um, how we can decarbonize the aviation sector. So now I will go through all the um, market segment. So if you look the, at the all electric commuter aircraft here, what we are de um, developing is we're developing our 300 kilowatt plus high power density and direct drive electric propulsion unit. Um, and we, we use our system voltage up to 900 DDC. And we, here we are considering to use battery as energy storage system and up to 300 kilowatt hour can be possible um, to be contained in this class of aircraft. As I said before, we are also developing propulsion system for urban air mobility. You see here our exam example of um, eVTOL vehicle. Here we are developing also our electric propulsion unit. However, with other objectives, here we rather aiming at very high torque density. And the power of this air, um, APU is around 150 kilowatt. And it's also air cooled. Um, has a very high safety and, uh, and power density included. As I said before, the, currently the range of these vehicles are highly limited by the limited energy density of the batteries. So um, from the market demand, we have identified their potential needs to go further range. And for this case, we are also currently developing our turbo generator system. That means we use a gas turbine um, consuming either traditional fuel or sustainable um, aviation fuel. Uh, in future, we are also considering to burn hydrogen in this gas turbine. And this gas turbine will drive our generator system, produce electricity, and so that the vehicle can reach a much higher range. And this system, hybrid electric um, propulsion system is more complex because you have two different energy sources and need a more sophisticated control mechanism. We are also developing the system which can handle this um, rather complex um, power system. Last but not least, it's not enough just to develop an aircraft uh, or sell an aircraft. You still need to operate that. And Rolls-Royce has very um, extensive, good relationship with airliners and with airports. We are also, um, we have offerings in this sector. We are developing uh, energy as a service um, <clears throat> program for our customers. So that, for example, we considering to lease the battery to the operators so that you can just um, use the battery and we will take it, the battery back for a second usage. And also we will we can, we'll consider the microgrid systems. That, that means we will use uh, wind energy and also hydrogen storage to support our cleaner aviation and also for the um, transient um, power supply, we also, also developed kind of battery container, which will uh, absorb the peak in the power demand. So currently we're also develop our service offering for the operators. So you're welcome also to have a talk with us on your visions, how you want to operate that. And we're glad to see how we can support you in the operations. So I sum it up, we are developing electric propulsion system for urban air mobility market, um, powering the electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Here we have two, currently two partners, that's um, Vertical Aerospace and Embraer EVE. Um, and in the commuter segment, we are also developing power system 
Um, here, the leading partner is, for example, Technum and Vidro. solutions to the airlines so that the fleet introduction will be not a big, big problem for them. Furthermore, um, as I mentioned, if you consider a longer range mission, um, we can also provide a turbo generator system um, utilizing their extensive or the core business, core know-how know um, know of Rolls-Royce to deliver a small engine powering our turbo generator, delivering more energy into your aircraft platform. So this is our overall uh, product portfolio and our overall offering. So happy to catch up with you as airframer or operator and how we can help you to realize your vision. As an outlook for the future, I want to show this picture. So this picture was taken on the Farnborough Air Show where our Rolls-Royce CEO Warren East and the Hyundai Motor Group uh, chairman signed our memorandum of understanding um, to utilize the Hyundai's advanced fuel cell technology and try to implement that into aerospace environment, delivering a more novel energy source. So this program is also ongoing and I'm sure I can present an update to the next um, forum. So that's all from my side. Um, I showed all our product portfolio to power ad advanced air mobility. Thanks a lot for your ad attention. Happy to catch up with you and try to find some collaboration opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Xinying. And uh, yeah, so very interesting. And we see every year uh, we have Rolls Royce and every year something is going further. Uh, so we see it is progressing. And if we look at the world market, there are several of the competitors of Rolls-Royce, uh, for example, in the turbine market like Saffron, they are now also trying to catch up and also mm -hmm. putting energy into electric aviation, which seems to be that now the whole community, if you see Boeing, Airbus, uh, Rolls-Royce, Saffron, they're all getting into electric aviation. So it is a trend and I think we will see it soon. Thanks again, Jinying. And um, the, now we come to our next speaker. We had a large multinational company, which is um, Rolls-Royce. And, and now we have a smaller startup company, not any more startup because they're already established quite a while, but still small company from Czech Republic, MGM Compro, also having a long history on electric aviation. I see Jakub uh, Henschel, the head of marketing at uh, MGM Compro, he is online. So Jakob, um, maybe you share your screen and I leave, uh, I would cut my microphone as soon as you take it over. Yeah, thank you very much. Introduction. I'm just experiencing some problems here with sharing my screen, but trying to open it now. It's on and with the presentation. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Great. Um, yeah, as, as, as we started, first of all, thanks a lot for the invitation. Thanks a lot to uh, be a part of this, this uh, great event and to be able to present uh, who we are, what we, what we are active at, at on the market. And uh, uh, to uh, my pre-speaker, I'm going to have the presentation from a uh, slightly different perspective as uh, we are, uh, let's say, medium-sized company with a team of uh, right now 50 professionals, uh, both engineers and technicians mainly, uh, which are developing the uh, complex electric propulsion systems for aviation. Uh, right now, we're in the range uh, from 10 to actually 400 kilowatt output power, which is, I think, very, very good. 
uh, performance uh, we came with. Uh, we have designed, development, and manufacturing under one roof with own R and D uh, facilities. As we really said, that we're a startup. We're not a startup at all, and uh, we've been on, on the market uh, almost thirty years. But our our role has changed rapidly. At the beginning, it was not aviation at all. It was specialty electronics and embedded electronics, where we we had our let's say core throughout the 90s and, and around the year 2000, we switched to, uh, let's say, more advanced systems and electric propulsion systems. We can say that we're active in the aviation yeah. since uh, 2010, where we started with about projects for um, Airbus subsidiaries at that time, and it developed throughout the time to, let's say, more uh, flying projects I'm going to talk about later on. So uh, what's our product portfolio right now? Uh, the highest value added we, we want to bring to market is the complex electric propulsion system. What it means, uh, electronic speed controller, uh, electric motor, uh, and the complex battery system, including battery management system. I would say that our our uh, big advantage is that we are not any integrator, but we are designer, developer, and also manufacturer of the most crucial parts of the propulsion system, which is definitely the electric motor plus electronic speed controller and the uh, overall uh, or complex battery system, including the managing electronics. So. Uh, umbrella of MGM Compram provided in the different power ranges. So uh, very briefly, how our projects are, are, are uh, split into the different aviation categories. So uh, the, let's say, biggest challenge for the future and, and for the whole, our team is uh, to come up with a 400 kilowatt propulsion system, which can for run still, but the development is on board and it's going to come up with the first uh, uh, ground and stand testing in May this year. So I think it's going to be the biggest thing, uh, let's say, in the in the in the uh, year to come. Then uh, there are a lot of projects in the category of uh, urban air mobility. Uh, very, very, f I would say, famous part of the uh, are also developing their systems with us. So we're very glad uh, that, that we can be part of it. Then uh, another class is like for air power, 60 to 80 kilowatt IP power, very nice project such as Phoenix, you can see on the picture. Uh, I think this is the airplane which, which uh, uh, regularly wins all the... Uh, mm, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, did it was it was in two thousand. They won the award for uh, the longest range uh, flight in the air. It was more than two and a half hours of motorized flight. Then you have a the, the project uh, Airbus E Fan. It's it's a long time ago, but it was it was in two thousand thirteen the first fully electric aircraft which crossed the English the and the, from the other side we have, we have uh, the gliders, the self-launching uh, gliders as we, as we call it, and uh, the last class, if I put it this way, within the aviation, it's uh, uh, unmanned aero vehicles such as, such as a, a, a drone uh, from our Norwegian partner you can see on the picture. Uh, down, down, right. So uh, here, some of the particular projects we're we're uh, active at. So one of the big names, XTI aircraft with a Prefang 600. Uh, here you can see, let's see basic facts about the project. Uh, this uh, aircraft had their uh, validation flight successfully done in in May 2019, and that time 
we're uh, continuing in the development of, of uh, specialty motor controllers and and their, uh, let's say, specialized firmware and, and the overall communication uh, with the peripheries. Uh, then another project is Bell APT uh, platform, a uh, very nice uh, project which uh, should work as a, as a cargo UAV, uh, but has also a, a different uh, uh, missions in which it could be used, could also be scaled and, and its modular systems to also very, very uh, uh, promising project we are active at. Uh, then this is uh, our, our Czech project, uh, mainly uh, aimed to a military sector. Uh, where we develop uh, all together with our partner, the Airframer, uh, a specialty redundant system uh, for the vertical takeoff of this of this uh, particular aircraft, and uh, it uh, brings a lot of advantages uh, in terms of saving uh, uh, space and weight. So the use cases for this particular project are surveillance, agriculture, construction, geoscanning. So, so, so typical, what's typical for these UAVs. Then another project, the uh, Defer Aerospace, uh, our Swiss partners uh, with their uh, regional air mobility solution, uh, very, very advanced low noise system with tilt wing flight transition system uh, aiming uh, to be, to be uh, in the year, in, in uh, years to come. So uh, here are a couple of uh, references. Uh, so, so even though we're, we're a smaller company, uh, we still uh, uh, roll with the big dogs, I, I would call it. Uh, so here you can see some, some, uh, some bigger names. Uh, and, and also there are a lot of, um, let's say, uh, well-funded startups all around the globe. So uh, this is this is where where our activities are are focused. Uh, it's not just uh, big and small companies, but also armies, universities, and 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 various research institutes who also belong to our partners. So that was very briefly all from my side. Thanks a lot for the opportunity to present uh, and uh, I'm ready to answer any question you might have. Thank you very much. The questions we will do like uh, in the sessions before in the Q&A uh, after the last speaker of this session. I have to apologize again, especially for you, but also for some other that this year it was very short notice that we got uh, to you because we had some of the issues to get the right, um, to get the fixed confirmation of our Chinese partners due to the COVID policy. So that's I'm why I'm even more happy that we got everything done and uh, we got good sessions uh, together. And thanks again, talking. I have already several questions and we have several questions in the, in the audience. I just want to mention one thing. If one of you in the audience or in the YouTube has the will to contact one of our presenters here, you will, may always write to us if you don't have their contact and we will get you in contact with the people. So our next speaker is Konstantin Kondak. Um, from the company Electrosolar, and we have him here also uh, as he's speaking for Electrosolar and for Geiger, because Electrosolar is an electric aircraft manufacturer, but uh, Geiger Engineering is a motor manufacturer. We are in the propulsion session. The main difference, I would say, that's why we are scaling down. First, scaling we had down. Down. First, we had Rolls Royce, whose aim is to make really big electric motors. Voltage going over 1000 uh, in the later end. Then we had MGM Compro working in the mid range from smaller um, motor controllers and motors up to uh, larger. I think they are largest, but we'll ask this later will be uh, 400 kilowatt. And now uh, we have Geiger Engineering, also very long in the electric aviation flying scene already. And uh, 
working at a low vo voltage ends and Konstantin may tell us why this makes sense. Konstantin, your presentation is already on. You're on, so I switch myself off. It's yours. So thank you very much, Vili. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to make uh, this uh, presentation today. As it was uh, mentioned, uh, the presentation will be given in the name of uh, two companies. Yeah, so I am from Electra Solar and um, um, Geiger Engineering uh, is also presented, uh, is also presenting in my uh, person um, uh, here. Uh, and uh, I will start um, the presentation with uh, a short uh, overview of what we are doing in Electra Solar. Uh, we are a designer and a manufacturer of uh, different types of uh, electric uh, aircrafts, uh, manned and unmanned. Uh, we are working in the range uh, up to 1000 kilograms, so the most of the system are in the German ultralight class. Uh, you can see here some <clears throat> of the pictures. So with uh, two seaters, uh, manned aircrafts and optionally piloted and completely unmanned aircrafts also in the same range, but also small aircrafts like you can see here in the middle, 10 kilogram takeoff weight, yeah. So uh, Geiger Engineering uh, is also well-known company in uh, our uh, scene. Uh, the main product uh, is a set of uh, components for uh, complete uh, electric uh, propulsion system, starting from propellers, uh, going through the motor, motor controllers, uh, batteries with integrated uh, intelligent uh, BMSs, then interfaces and uh, charging devices. All the components are combined together in an intelligent system. Uh, the main advantages uh, of uh, this uh, product uh, is uh, high efficiency, uh, double redundancy. So we will see later how it is integrated uh, uh, in the aircraft. Uh, the, uh, the complete system has uh, advanced state monitoring and uh, self-protection, uh, 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 integrated algorithms, uh, 60 volt, uh, uh, voltage, uh, the low voltage uh, uh, approach here, and uh, the systems are offered in the range uh, from 12 to 80 kilowatt. And uh, why we do this um, uh, presentation together uh, is uh, that um, uh, fact we have uh, long term strategic cooperation um, uh, between two companies, we are not only integrator. Uh, of this uh, proposal system, but for our purposes, we are modify, modifying and also developing together with uh, Joachim Geiger uh, some parts of the components. And uh, uh, for the future, we have also plans for a joint uh, development. So uh, here in the following couple of uh, minutes, I would like to uh, give you some examples how this uh, system uh, was integrated in a different type of aircraft. Uh, so here we see the uh, latest uh, product of uh, the company Electra Solar is a two-seater in a German ultralight class. Uh, we have uh, batteries uh, uh, all together with uh, 35 kilowatt hours and uh, we can fly uh, over two and a half uh, hours. So um, the Interesting point is uh, this aircraft is that um, uh, uh, the chargers uh, are um, uh, integrated in the aircraft, so they can be also put it out, but uh, normally the pilot uh, takes the chargers with him and uh, the aircraft can be charged uh, everywhere. Yeah, So also this uh, uh, long uh, distance flight with uh, multiple hops uh, are possible. And uh, in the certification approach, we already measured uh, the noise level. Is, uh, so we have this amazing uh, 48 decibel only is uh, very, very uh, silent in the aircraft. And the main purpose of the system is to be used as a training machine uh, for uh, ultralight pilots. 
So we have also the, this is a, our first uh, aircraft, Electro One. Uh, one seater, this aircraft is equipped with uh, autopilot system, can uh, fly completely without pilot, but now in Germany, we are operating it in optionally piloted mode and mostly, uh, this aircraft is used for different uh, research projects. Like you can see here, uh, in the under the aircraft, uh, the uh, experimental radar system is integrated. Here on the next slide, you see uh, uh, you see the uh, integrated uh, uh, laser um, uh, link for data communication. Um, here are some screenshots. So this actually we also discovered this like a, a new market uh, for uh, development of technologies uh, related to unmanned aircrafts. We used our optionally piloted aircrafts can also operate in a very uh, good uh, defined uh, conditions. So here on the uh, yellow track, you see five times repeated approach and landing. You can see that uh, up to 20 centimeters, uh, the same trajectory can be reproduced in different flights. Uh, the next uh, example is uh, uh, aircraft Electra 2. It's a uh, 27 meter wingspan aircraft. Uh, so the two first aircrafts I presented uh, before, Electra Trainer and uh, Electra 1. Uh, those aircraft uh, have uh, 13 uh, meters wingspan. This one is twice uh, larger, uh, 27. And the main purpose of this aircraft is to perform high altitude flights. So we are talking about flights between 10 and 20 kilometers altitude. In this example, it's a two-seater um, uh, aircraft um, is uh, used in Switzerland for some uh, research and record uh, projects, but on the base of this aircraft, we have also completely unmanned versions, which we operated already in high altitude uh, missions. So it's flying without a pilot on board. And on this uh, next slide, uh, you can see uh, 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 the scheme of uh, electric uh, propulsion systems, uh, which are installed uh, in all of uh, presented aircrafts. We have uh, a motor composed of two independent motors rigidly connected in a shaft. We have two motor controllers and we have two completely independent battery sets. Yeah? So these two uh, subsystems they are also electrically disconnected from each other. And uh, in our approach, when one uh, system fails, uh, we can uh, not only fly, perform level flight with, uh, uh, with the second system, but we can also climb a little bit. So this uh, gives, of course, uh, um, possibility to increase uh, the reliability of the complete system, which is uh, extremely important as for a meant application, but especially important is also for um, unmanned systems. So here the modular systems uh, system approach uh, allows us to, to use a different uh, uh, number of battery blocks. Uh, uh, here we can reconfigure the system uh, depending on uh, the mission, depending on the payload, um, so with different um, numbers of the batteries. So here on this, this slide, you see a uh, possible placement of the components. Uh, we are talking about low voltage systems. So the batteries, uh, motor, motor controller uh, should be um, uh, placed uh, uh, close together in order to reduce the cable length. So here it's a little bit more complex system as uh, aircraft Electro 2. In addition to uh, batteries, we have also sol solar generators and uh, this is uh, connected uh, using uh, maximum power point tracker uh, to the battery system. So we can also, with this type of the aircraft, we can also uh, uh, under good uh, con sun condition, we can also climb uh, without uh, using uh, the batteries. Uh, so we have enough uh, energy to perform also solar flights. 
So now I would like to uh, uh, present some advantages and disadvantages for uh, this uh, low voltage approach, which is, I think, one of the uh, most important differences we have uh, uh, to other uh, uh, colleagues and competitors. So as a disadvantage, uh, clear, yeah, we have uh, uh, stronger current and we ha have to use uh, uh, bigger cables. Um, so we have more weight for power cables. Uh, if we place the batteries uh, far away from the motor controller, so we have also significant uh, voltage drop, which generates additional problems in, uh, in the system. We have, uh, of course, a more complex design of some components regarding high currents. Yeah? So as you will see, it's also yeah advantage and disadvantage. Um, you having a more complex design for uh, this high currents, we have a more simple design for a high to high voltage. Yeah? And of course, uh, this approach can be used only for uh, limited power. So here we cannot talk about, or at least uh, we are not uh, going uh, towards uh, 300 kilowatt or something uh, like this. So, so we stay with the lightweight aircrafts where this uh, uh, system, uh, in our opinion, has um, significant advantages. So, and the advantages is uh, clear. We have simple personal protection rules for production, inspection, maintenance and operation. So 60 volt does not require any um, additional qualification for technical pers personnel and for the pilot. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have uh, more simple design uh, of the component regarding uh, uh, high voltage. And uh, what is uh, very important, uh, we have also additional pilot safety in the emergency situation. If we have a hard landing uh, where we have the aircraft is damaged or we have some crash, of course, uh, 60 volt, uh, so at least from the point of view of the high voltage, we don't have any problems with the safety. No additional effort for isolation in high altitudes, but this is a, some special area. And all together, yeah, we can sum up that uh, to our experience, uh, cost reduction in production, inspection, maintenance, and operation is the main advantage of this approach. As a summary, um, uh, I put it on the last slide, uh, uh, the most important uh, advantages of uh, this type of the systems. Uh, we should mention here that uh, what we are presenting is not um, uh, based on uh, some calculations and laboratory tests. But of course, we have this, but we have also uh, experience uh, over two decades uh, with different type of the aircrafts. Yeah? So, and um, as a very first advantage, we would like to highlight this uh, full double redundant co concept simple handling and maintenance to the low voltage approach, advanced state monitoring and self-protection uh, system integrated, uh, and uh, um, uh, allowing the pilot to operate uh, this uh, complex system in an easy way, quite high efficiency, uh, efficient air cooling for all components, which also simplifies uh, 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 in the first uh, um, plane, uh, the uh, maintenance of the aircraft, and all together, all together, to our opinion, this approach is uh, very interesting for ultralight uh, aircrafts because uh, of uh, significant reduction uh, uh, of the costs for uh, production, maintenance, and operation. So, thank you very much for your attention and. Uh, I would be glad also to answer the question later in the session. Thank you very much. I think we are at the end of this session. And so if you stay on and unshare your screen and we will get uh, the other speakers of this session back on the screen again with me. Uh, I think you will come later. You've been on another call, but.
Uh, but he's coming in right now. Perfect. So just perfect timing. So I start with my first question. First, again, to the audience in China, you can ask questions at any time. There are mics around. Sometimes they gave us the questions. We ask the questions here. But um, if there is any question, uh, if there is any question, yes. Uh, so, yeah, come over. Yeah. Um, yeah, hi. Um, this there is a uh, one question uh, coming from the audience to uh, Jacob. Uh, hey, Jacob. Um, so the audience said that you mentioned the EV, um, EV55, um, the turboprop um, airplane in your presentation. So the audience, the audience asked, what's the status of the electrification uh, project of this EV55, and what kind of uh, electric propulsion system is? Uh, is it going to use a fuel cell or turbine or hybrid? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for, for the question. Yes, correct. So uncovered. <laughs> there's a there's a partnership with Evector, which is the airframe company, just uh, 25 kilometers uh, far from our headquarters. So it's pretty clear that we are trying to take advantage of this uh, of this. Uh, fact and uh, regarding the project for EV, with EV55, uh, EV55 should serve as the test lab uh, for our 400 kilowatt propulsion system which is under development as I mentioned and uh, in May 2023 there should be uh, first ground test and we also cooperate together on the uh, let's say in-building procedures which are also connected with that so uh, yes, it should serve as a test lab for fully electric propulsion system at the beginning, but uh, as a follow-up project, uh, there should be also a, a, a hybrid variant. Uh, uh, so that's, let's say, the, the uh, forecast for the future. Well, uh, thank you very much. I have uh, yeah, uh, before we ask, I have one just one question here for uh, Jinying uh, because it's connected with this. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that in the medium range you have the electric motor with two power sources. One could be a turbine, the other one could be a fuel cell. So. Um, if you look at these two sol uh, solutions, what first, what do you think is the one which will come first? And second, what is the one which is more efficient? Because that's all about efficiency. How much uh, hydrogen would you burn and how could you store the hydrogen for uh, using? Or would the turbine in this case not run with hydrogen, but with uh, some other derivatives? You're still muted, Jinyi. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Um, I could not unmute myself. I need ah, the sorry. host to do that. Sorry, no problem. Okay. Um, yes, thank you for your question. Um, I think it's a good one. Um, indeed, um, we are developing both systems, but um, we see probably the um, entry into service of both systems uh, will be between, uh, towards the end of decade. Ask the question. Don't look to the screen. Okay. Sorry. sorry. No problem. Um, so we, we think both system will be um, probably enter into service towards end of the decade. So as I mentioned before, the turbo generator system or gas turbine have more clearer, more clear um, certification roadmap um, than fuel cell. Um, however, um, the whole system to develop the whole system to test them will also take time. So uh, both system will be ready towards end of this decade. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question on uh, Konstantin to the Geiger system. Um, first, uh, you said you will not go up to 300 kilowatts. So what do you think with the technology you have there and what are your plans? At the moment, I think you're at, uh, it's a two disc motor and one disc has about 
I think uh, 40 kilowatt, correct me uh, in your answer if I say something wrong. And so what do you think, would it be just multiple stacks? So you would have four disks or how would be the progress if you want to have more power? So we are thinking about to increase the power of uh, one uh, disk and uh, then um, to use a two disk approach or two motors approach also in the future. So we have a demand to increase uh, the power by a factor 1.5. This is, is uh, could be feasible in our opinion, uh, but at the moment we are not thinking about uh, uh, high uh, higher power uh, levels like uh, two or 300 uh, kilowatts. So I think, uh, so this uh, level of uh, power should be analyzed. Uh, it's very likely that this uh, low voltage approach is not a proper one, yeah? So, but nevertheless, we have a segment uh, of the aircraft uh, of the market and application. And we think that uh, with our system, we, we can also, uh, um, make a good uh, business and uh, provide uh, reliable and cost-effective uh, systems for that. Yeah. So each each approach has advantages, disadvantages in this application. What we think, as I explained before, so much higher powers will, would be not um, a good possible with this approach. Okay. So next question is coming from the audience again. Um, yeah, um, here are the two questions coming from audience to uh, Chi Yin. Um, the first is, um, is the 300 kilowatt um, electric propulsion system the maximum and the only um, product right now uh, for certification? And the second is, uh, what is the, the development plan afterwards, after this 300 kilowatts? Um, when is Rolls Royce going to kick off the megawatts? Um, pr uh, propulsion system um, and what is going to be the uh, application of that megawatt uh, propulsion system. Thank you. Can you repeat the first question again? Uh, so uh, the, the 300 would, kilowatt. The question would be, so what will be after the 300 uh, yeah, kilowatt? Uh, I think the first the second question one. Is, the second one is uh, what is the Clear? product development okay. plan after, after the current uh, 300 um, kilowatt and uh, a megawatt, when is um, Rolls Royce going to kick off the megawatt level mm -hmm. products and what would be the application of that? Uh, megawatt? Yeah, I, I captured the second question. So I will uh, just answer the second question, probably then we go back to the first one. Yeah. Okay, so indeed, um, uh, for the 300 kilowatt um, EPU or motor plus inverter, we call it EPU, we uh, already um, at the very beginning considered it as a product family design. So we pay a lot of attention for the scalability of the motor design so that once this motor has brought into market uh, to serve the commuter segment, we can also turn uh, ourselves to develop a larger engine, uh, a larger um, EPU based on the same concept. Uh, this is uh, already planned from the first clean sheet design, and we are uh, quite confident we can deliver our scale, uh, up, scaled up version of that motor in a very short time frame. And that will also dependent on the customer and market demand. Currently, uh, we are working in a clean sky project in this megawatt range, and it's dependent on the project result and project the wish or demand of the project partners to, to give exactly the power class of the upcoming new motor. So that's the answer for the uh, second question. For the first one, can you repeat it again, Ching? You are mute, you are on mute. Uh, uh, All right. Uh, the first question is: Is the 300 kilowatts uh, um, product the, currently the maximum electric propulsion system in certification. Uh, in certification by Rolls Royce at this moment? Or do you have another motor in certification process already? This ah, okay. Thank you for, for clarification. Yes, this uh, we plan to bring this 300 plus kilowatt motor to certification and bring out as a product serve into the commuter market. And currently, this is indeed the biggest one. Yes. Okay, thank you. 
So my next question, let me just switch screens here. Yeah, my next, next question would be to um, MGM Compro, uh, because you have had very uh, a wide range of products. Uh, could you disclose so what was the smallest voltage you're working? I think you're now looking at the 400 voltage for the uh, for the commuter aircraft, or is this more than 400 voltage with your controllers? Yes, Th thanks for the question, Willy. Uh, yeah, our controllers are ranging from, let's say, 25 watts. This is the lowest, let's say, operating voltage we're active at, and we are now, uh, uh, our, our, ce our ceiling is 800 volt right now. So uh, as, as also was said here, the lower voltage uh, means lower performance output because if you are it's a, aiming at that 100 kilowatt plus, uh, definitely it goes either for two or, or higher, 400 volt and higher. So the biggest application we have, that means 150 to 400 kilowatts, uh, this is 800 volt based systems. Okay, thank you for the answer. And I have uh, one, probably yeah, it should be the last question for this session, which I have to Constantine. Um, because you mentioned the solar stratus project, as I understand, the motors you're using, the guider motor, they are air-cooled. Don't you have or facing issues there when the aircraft is flying very high because it's supposed to fly over 10,000, 13,000 meters, uh, more than 30, uh, nearly 40,000 feet. Isn't there an issue with the cooling, um, air cooling in this altitude because you still need the performance, but the cooling air is getting very thin. Uh, yes, of course, uh, this is the issue. Uh, you have to design the air cooling system. Uh, but to give a very short answer to your question, we don't have any problems at this high altitudes. And this is not a, a calculation based uh, statement, but we really flew these missions uh, in unmanned versions and uh, the cooling system does not, uh, is not stressed more than uh, on uh, lower altitudes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So I think, uh, yeah, we are just in time. I know we have one time more for a very quick question um, because I think, uh, Chinying, you mentioned that uh, the, uh, you know, water, that the uh, your new renewable energy could be produced by water power. Um, what would be the, uh, um, the, the, or, what is a start market? You mentioned Vidro, but maybe you can give some words on why Norway is the place where Rolls Royce is probably going to start the uh, uh, the commuter market. Thank you also for this question. Yes, Norway is very interesting market. Um, um, Norway has only five million but they have 30 million um, air travel passengers per year. So in average, um, each Norwegian uh, flies six times per year. And I've been there as well. So you have a lot of short haul connections um, below 300 kilometers. And that makes this market very interesting because uh, the, if you look at the geography of the country, it's always divided by rivers, by fjords. So they need uh, a lot short haul air travels. So this is one uh, reason why we go there. And secondly, also the electricity price is very attractive in Norway. When I visited Norway in July this year, um, colleagues showed me the price was 0 0.5 cent per kilowatt hour in north of Norway. And this, of course, is very interesting also for electric air aircraft to operate there because it's almost for free. Okay, thank you very much. So thank you for the speakers of this session. I think we got a nice interest and in, again, like in the session before, a nice overview of the very large motors, which will be used for the replacing of the traveling, uh, which is happening now with turbines, but also seeing new markets coming up with uh, electric propulsion where suddenly
aircraft flying when you do it with renewable cheap electric energy can be a real alternative to car transport or others and even to train transport because if you like in Norway um, you also could say I built a, a, a railway there but you don't have many people but you have long distance and you don't have the uh, the railway if you want to build a railway up in Norway with all the fjords it would be very very expensive and that's why I think the Norwegian government is looking into this uh, and keeping their um, because I think it's one of the very few countries in the world where the uh, the flying is really part of the public transport system. The government is putting a lot of money into there. And tomorrow, in the last session, we'll have a fellow from Norway who's giving and speaking with us about another Norwegian project. So we'll hear about this. So thanks for the speakers of this session. And I see that um, Christian Mundigla from FACC. Can you get eFlight Journal? Just scan the QR code on this page. Or just type in your browser www.eflightjournal.com. Then you receive the page with the latest online news on electric flying, EV tolls, and everything which is connected with electric mobility in the air or you can click the link on the top and then you go to the latest PDF version which you either can read in the Yumpu reader directly on your screen like a conventional magazine or you can go and download the magazine as PDF file so that you can read it offline wherever you want. Thanks for watching and goodbye.